this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to our family and friends worshiping with us in person on Facebook Live and our official YouTube channel. We bring you greetings from the Bethel Community Church right here in the beautiful city of Fairfield, California. Our pastor is Anthony Gilmore. For those of you who would like to send cards, prayer requests, or words of encouragement, our mailing address is 600 East Tabor Avenue, Fairfield, California, 94533. If you would like to send donations, you can use Givelify, Venmo, or the Cash App. We want to thank you for worshiping with us each week and supporting this ministry. We're here to bring you hope, peace, and joy. We're glad you're here in the building and at home watching. So let's all praise him for all he's done and worship him for who he is.
trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding but in all thine ways <laughs> I said trust in the Lord I said trust in the Lord when there's no money in the bank account I'm going to trust in the Lord when, when, when the doctor gave me some bad news my trust was in the Lord I wish I had some mothers in the house that could testify that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you would have lost your mind. You would have threw in the towel. You would have went 5150. You would have ran out on your family. You would have ran out on your children. But your trust was in the Lord. And you knew who to call on. The Bible says, look to the hills from which cometh my help. And my help comes from the Lord. I wish I had some happy folks in the house. You ought to stand up. You ought to worship. You ought to give him some glory. You ought to praise his holy name. Because his name is worthy of all of the praise come on do i got somebody in here that know that you know that you know that you know it was nobody but jesus and jesus what's his name i said what's his name i say what's his name who you gonna call who you gonna call He'll be right there in the midst of your storm. Do I have some witnesses? Come on and shout. Come on and shout. 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 Yes. 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 It may be midnight in somebody's life. But there is sunlight on the other side of midnight. And midnight only lasts for one minute. I wish I had. You, it's the darkest point. But as soon as midnight is over, daytime is coming. I said daytime is coming. Oh, yes, Father. In the name of Jesus right now. We pray right now that the anointing would fill this congregation right now. Touch right now the one that's going to bring your word today, oh God. We're praying that this word will change some lives. We're praying that this word will, will, will start a new relationship with you right now. It is in the name of Jesus, oh God, that we ask that the Holy Ghost will just come right now and fill the hearts of the people. Touch the choir and touch the musician and touch this man of God. It's in the name of Jesus that strongholds are broken right now, oh God. You can't hold me, devil. You better get behind me right now in the name of Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we shout and say amen. 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 amen.
the Reverend A.L. Gilmore and First Lady Gilmore yep. and the entire BCC family. I want to say to all our visitors, we so glad that you stopped by here on your way to heaven. Well, the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. So in the name of our Father, in the name of his Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Greatness of the Lord. Greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. Love that He's shown. Love that He shows is unconditional. Power of the Lord. Power of the Lord. Unbeatable. Unbeatable. Great. Great is the God we serve. Greatness of the Lord. Greatness of the Lord is
endureth forever. How many witnesses do I have today that know, that really believe that the Lord, the Lord is good? You look good, so I know the Lord has been good to you. Is that right? So we just hear to praise his name. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, help me sing it. Victory is mine. Victory. Praise. Don't be ashamed and 
Join in with us, clap your hands, stand up. Come on, who came to lift him up? Come on, come on, did you come to lift up Jesus? Come on, don't fool me, we're here to worship today. Lift up Jesus. He is worthy, huh? I said he's worthy. How good the Lord really is. Come on, give it up for our choir today, our band. Amen. How good the Lord really is. Praise God today from whom all blessings flow. Amen. We are excited today. Our youth, our youth are usually in charge on third Sundays. Amen. Come on, give it up for our youth today. Show me a church with no young people, and I'll show you a dying church. Amen? Amen. So our young people, today is the relaunch, the, what you call that when they start off again? Their, de their debut. Our youth choir is making their debut today. Amen? Amen. We, have, we had a youth choir pre-COVID, and we kind of shut everything down, but we're reorganizing and putting things back in place, and they are here today. Amen. Amen. Sister Pendleton is their new directress. She and Brother Jaheem. Amen. Amen. And so they're going to come. Where are you? They're in charge. Our ushers, they youth, the youth ushers are in charge today, and I guess they have dual responsibilities. So they're, they're ushering and they're singing. So 
So come on, youth, wherever you are. Come on, Sister Pendleton, you all. Come on, give it up for our young people today. I'm excited about our youth choir. They are relaunching. Where they at? Y'all ain't in here? Y'all ain't come? Oh, they going to stand. Excuse me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, give it up for our young people. They're coming. <laughs>
Is it what you do? Yeah. Come on, help us. Praise is what I do. Yes, it is. Is it what you do? Let me see you wave your hand. Praise is what I do. bother y'all. Praise is what I, is it what y'all do? Come on, don't fool me. Do you praise him when you want to be close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise is what I do. What I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Glorify. Oh, God, oh, God, yeah, yeah. We magnify. We glorify. Yeah. Come on, give it up for our children today. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, it's what I do. I don't mean, okay, okay, all right, I'm done, I'm done. Praise is what I, it's what I do. I don't know about you. But when I want to be close, sometime in the car by myself, I give him a praise. Praise! It's what I do. It's what I do. My, my, my. What a sweet spirit. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Not me. He deserves a hand of praise. He inhabits the praises of his people. Praise is what I do. Praise is who I am. My, my, my. Ah, my, that's a good worship moment right there. That's a good worship moment. That's a good worship moment. How good the Lord is. How good the Lord really is. Thank God for you, Sister Pendleton and Brother Jaheim, Reverend Pendleton, those of you that have worked with our children. Well done. Well done. Well done. Amen. Show me a church with no young people, and I'll show you a dying church. So I'm grateful for the children of Bethel. And we don't, they're not the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today, church of right now. So we praise God for them on today. We are blessed today. I, it's, it's family day for me, y'all. It's family day for me. And so, Bethel, I need y'all to bear with me for a moment. I, we have a special presentation that I want to come at this time. Then I'm going to come back, we'll receive our gifts, then the choir will come back, and we'll hear a word from the Lord. Amen? And so, um, 
on this past week, there was a special birthday, and uh, today is we're going to celebrate the birthday. When I was uh, when I was a boy, my mother died when I was before I even knew who I was, and, and and if nobody had told me my mother died, I wouldn't have known that she died. Are y'all hearing me? And so you know you know in our family, Grandma and them stepped up. Grandmama and them, you, they, didn't, they didn't do no foster care. They wasn't doing no, 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 no. <laughs> and so, thank God I wasn't a product of the foster care system. And so my daddy's sister and his mom and his other sister, they just stepped up. And they raised us, amen? And so my aunt, who is not my aunt, she's like my mama, She's the only mother I've ever known. She turned 85 on the other day, on Wednesday. 85 years old. She turned 85, 85, and that's a blessing. Amen. 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 And she is my aunt. She is no stranger here at Bethel. She is... She will tell you that she has two churches. She'll tell you that she's a member of her church in Oakland and that she's a member of Bethel. Amen. So I'm excited that she is still with us. And, and you know, oftentimes we wait until folks are sp spread out, rolling down the aisle, and we say all these nice things about them when they can't hear you. Amen. And so since she is here, she thought she was coming to my anniversary today. But it's really her birthday. And so I'm excited that she is with us. And I've asked, uh, and in our family, we don't have cousins. Everybody just your sisters and brothers. Amen. And so all the family friends and all the, uh, they just become aunties. Amen. And so I asked our dear auntie Elaine to come and do a presentation for her. Amen. Say amen for Sister Elaine joined her. And Bethel, just so y'all know, she is the sister of our own sister, Andrea Angelo. That is her sister. Amen. Sister Angelo is not here today taking care of her husband, but Sister Elaine is going to come with this quick presentation, and then we'll be ready to come back. Good morning. All praises to God who has shown the world what love is and what love does because he sacrificed his only son, Jesus. And then we see what obedience is because his son finished the work at Calvary. And then God the Father sent the Holy Spirit to lead God, convict and convert you so that you may be able to do the work that the Father has said we are to do. To the angel of this house, none other than my nephew, Pastor Anthony Gilmore. To the other poop, to the others who, who, who graced this pulpit this morning, none other than her nephew, pa Minister Rodney Blanchard, to all the other ministers that are present, to family, friends, well worshipers, well, well wishers on this auspicious occasion, we are recognizing a wonderful person this morning. You hear the passage of scripture that says, give honor to whom honor is due. And in most cases, it's generally the angel of the house, the pastor. But it's not limited. It was not never meant to be just those. It is for those who have given their life to the Lord and are examples. So this morning, Pastor Gilmore has allowed us just to take a few minutes to give honor to whom honor is due. None other than Sister Mary Jo Gilmore Smith. We're going to ask this morning, we're going to ask this morning that her granddaughter, Sister Sharia Wiley, would escort her to the front right now. I could use my liberties this morning as she comes forward to tell you and express to you my love to her and why we are so close. 
but I'm not going to do that because I know what would happen. You too would want to come forward and tell of the great relationship that you have with her. I just want to tell you as she comes forward, come sister, we've been sisters a long time. Pastor Gilmore's father was there and helped me with my first child. There was a time that I stayed up. I said I wasn't going to say anything. I'm not going to tell you. Just know that we go back a long ways. And so I could say uh, many things about my sister today. I could talk about her culinary skills. I could talk about her interior decorating skills. I could talk about the great mother she is. I could talk about the great grandmother she is. I could talk about the great grandmother she is. I could talk about the wonderful friend she is, the confidant she is. But most of all, I want to talk about the saint that she is. Because she is a saint. She has set the example. She has lived the life and the Lord God has granted her more than three score and ten. As it has been said this morning, God has granted her 85 years. And if you check, and if you check today, many are not living that. Many are not, many can't say that they're living to be 85. If you check all the, the social media, uh, check and see, people are dying at younger, at young ages today. But God has blessed her because of the lives that she has touched. So we want to make this presentation today. I want to say on behalf of the family, thank you for coming. And while I'm getting a chance, I am honored to be before you this morning. While I have this chance, you will have a chance later on in the, in the social to, to have whatever you would want to say. Or you can always send her a card. You can always give her a phone call, letting her know throughout the year what she means to you. God bless you. We thank God today. We thank God for 85 years. Amen. What a blessing. Thank you, Auntie Elaine. God bless you. We love you. Thank you. Amen. Come on, church family. Give it up for them again. God bless you. Thank you. Thank God for this occasion. Amen. Let me say to all of our visitors how happy we are that you are with us. Give it up for all of our guests today. We have several visitors with us today. So good to have you in our midst today. So good to see Sister Monica Foster and your family and Anthony and all of you all. God bless you. Good to have you here today. We are also good to see you, Brother Keith Hamilton. Amen. Brother Officer Roberson, good to see you and others. Happy anniversary, Brother Calvin Johnson. Happy anniversary. Amen. Sister Leah Johnson been putting up, I mean, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. God bless you. We are moving swiftly. We have some candidates for baptism, and I'm excited about the word today. And so we want to move expeditiously, amen? Sister Deborah Johnson, we're praying for you and your family as you head to Africa this week, amen, the motherland, amen. Two real quick reminders, two real quick reminders. What is November 5th? Anybody know what November 5th is? November what is 5th is the election day, amen. Hey, good to see First Lady Wallace here today, also from Mount Zion. Don't forget, don't forget, November 5th. Everybody say November 5th. November 5th. Everybody say, Com I mean, I can't do that. I'm sorry. Don't forget to vote. Amen. I need you to vote. Amen. It's very important that we vote. This is the most crucial election uh, probably of our lifetime. But democracy is at stake. And yes, I'm going to remind us we need to vote. Amen. 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 You can't make the excuse you don't vote. Your vote don't count. The devil is a lie. Your vote does count. And our four parents, 
gave their blood, sweat, and tears. They were bitten by dogs and sprayed by water hoses so that we could have the right to vote. Amen. And so if, if you're not registered to vote, it may be too late, but all members of Bethel Community Church understand that you cannot be a member of Bethel Community Church and let me find out that you didn't vote. If you call yourself a member here, you need to be in an election place or done did your mail-in. Uh, we might have to discuss your membership. Amen. 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 If you don't know where to vote, you can come right here to the chandelier room. We are an election, uh, uh, what you call it, a polling place on that day. And so you can come and I'll be here with my pen on and I'm going to say who I'm voting for that day. And so uh, make sure if you're not sure where to vote, you're more than welcome to come and vote here. Am I right? Some of our members, our election workers, they can vote anywhere, right? If their name, if you're not sure where your local polling place is, you can vote at any election place. Amen. And so I need you to vote. Amen. Everybody registered? Everybody voting? Amen. Amen. It's important. Also, November 2nd, our... LLAR uh, Scholarship is having their fundraiser breakfast there at Applebee's here in Fairfield on November 2nd from 8 o'clock until 10 o'clock on that Saturday. And you can make sure, make sure, church family, you know how we support the scholarship and we send young people to school. Um, it's important. You need to buy your tickets, see, your, see Reverend Evans. Those of you on the scholarship team, stand up if, real quick, real quick. If you're on the scholarship team, you can see any of these people. Get your tickets. Make sure you get your tickets. It's very important. Make sure you get your tickets. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you, Brother Jack Smith. We're going to prepare our hearts for giving. We're going to prepare for giving. Ooh, I got a quiet church today. Uh, the scripture tells us, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings there shall not be room enough to receive a lot of people don't understand but the power of abundant living comes through giving amen you want to have more you got to give more and not just money but the Lord asks for our time our talent and our tithe amen and so we are a giving church. Thank God for Bethel being a giving church. Church family, I need you to give today. And we're going to uh, reach our financial obligations, our goals today. Now, if you would like to use the online giving tools, you may use the Givelify or the Cash App or Venmo. Just search for Bethel Community Church. We take, um, we take EBT. We take Walmart. We take gas cards, everything but lottery tickets, amen. Y'all don't believe me, but one time somebody put a lottery ticket in the offering basket. But let's give today, let's give, let's give. The scripture says that when we give, the Lord gives it back to us, pressed down, shaken together. He even allows it to run over, amen. So I don't believe in black cats and rabbit feet and broke mirrors. I don't believe in luck, but I do believe in the word of God. Amen. And so let's uh, prepare our hearts for giving. Minister Roberson, if you would come and bless our gifts. So good to see Jasmine and her friend back today. I was wondering where y'all had been. I thought I had said something. Man, good to see y'all back. Praise the Lord. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And he says, bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse. So let us be cheerful givers and give unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come humbly before your throne. Ask that you bless this offering, that it be used for the purpose of the upper keep of your kingdom. Lord God, bless each and every giver. Those that had a desire to give and those that could not. We ask these other blessings, our darling son, Jesus' name. For his sake alone, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're going to ask these two side sections. If you would stand, face the walls, and come around from the rear. Side sections. Mm -hmm. 
see Analia and uh, Joe Shira and, and uh, even the mom is here. God bless y'all. Aisha, good to see you all. Come on, let's have a good time in the Lord. This is a day that the Lord has made. We came to pray. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. Those of you in the middle section, if you would stand, face my left, your right, and come around from the rear. Good to see Deacon Irving here today from Oklahoma. Come on, let's have a good time in the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. We came. <laughs> We're going to have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. Oh, we came to praise the Lord. We came to praise the Lord. We We're gonna shout. We're gonna shout trumpets over. We're gonna sing hallelujah. We're gonna shout. Come on, let's have a good time in the Lord. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord, we came, we came to praise the Lord, oh, oh, oh. this is the day that the Lord, we came to praise the Lord, we're gonna sing, we're gonna have a good time, we're gonna have a good time, and we came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, we're gonna shout troubles over, we're gonna sing hallelujah, we're gonna shout troubles over, we're gonna sing hallelujah, we're gonna shout troubles over, hallelujah, shout troubles over. Come on, let's have a good time. Give it up for our youth ushers today. They holding it down. Our youth ushers. Thank God for our ushers today. They in charge, and if they tell you to sit down, sit down. If they tell you to move, move. <laughs> They running and doing all kinds. They just doing whatever they want to do. <laughs> Thank you for your gifts. They're singing, you just don't hear them. They're coming. They're coming.
That's it. And strong wind may blow, but I know the Lord will take me through it all. He'll make a way. Wait to wait for me. I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold on till he comes. God has just begun to make a way. Make a way for me.
excellent is thy name.
every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess. I don't know about you, but He is God. He healed my body, yes He did. He's excellent. He dried all of my tears. He calmed all of my fears. He's excellent. He's the King of Kings. He's the Nobody like Jesus. How many know he's excellent today? Come on, don't fool me. He is excellent. Can y'all just do a little bit? Just a little bit. I ain't got a lot of time. Just a little teaspoon of God said it. I believe it. God said it. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna take him at his word. The Lord is everything to me. Come on, sing. Oh, yes, he is. He said, My comfort, he would be. Lord yeah. said he would be right there. That's it. That's it. Oh, no, he's everywhere. God Comfort people. 
believe her. Got to 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 believe her. God said it. against the wall <laughs> it's all right to dance <laughs> yeah Excuse me. Yeah. How many got a praise? I I got a praise. I got a praise and a. about Jesus, how he set me free, I can To God be the glory. 
To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things He's done. For the things yeah. He's done. For the victory. For the victory. He's won. For the things He's done. For the to God. Oh, everybody. To God. He worked it all. He Hallelujah. 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 When praises go up, blessings come down. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And I don't know what you came to do, but we came to give him glory. We came to praise his holy name yes Lord that's what the old church would say yes Lord yes to your will yes yes brought me out did he bring anybody out brought me out I'll say yes to his will. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, yeah, yeah. How many got a yes in your spirit? Yes, yes Lord. Lord. How many of you believe on, he'll do it again? Yes. Yes, yes, yes Lord. Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. For what you can't see. Yes, Lord. You praise him in advance. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And then you know when you say yes to him, you want him to have his way. Have, have your, way. your way. No matter what the situation or the circumstances are. Have your way, Lord. And if it's not for you, for somebody else, have your way. Have your way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, 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 have your way. How good the Lord He's been good. Has he been good to you? He's been good. He worked it out when you didn't see your way through. He's been good. I don't know about you. I can't tell your story. But I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. The Lord's been good. Hey. Brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. He. Yeah. He's good. Oh, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you when your spirit mm -hmm. 
I'll say yes. My answer will be yes. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. I'm excited today. Church family, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for two reasons. First reason I'm excited is because is I don't have to preach today. <laughs> but I am excited today that my brother is here my brother who can preach has been chosen by God to proclaim his holy word amen amen he is no stranger here at Bethel he is he is no stranger he hails from the new destiny church there in Oakland under the leadership of Bishop Carl Smith and he is here today with us amen I've known him his whole life, amen? He's known me my whole life. We grew up in the same house. Brother Powell, I was preaching on the milk crates in the backyard, trying to save them, giving them crackers and juice for communion, but they wouldn't hear me. I think I even tried to baptize him in the bathtub at Grandma's house. They wouldn't hear me, but they finally woke up. <laughs> But I'm excited he is here today. He is my brother, beloved, love him dearly. And I want y'all to help me give a good God bless you and a welcome to my brother, Minister Rodney Blanchard from the New Destiny Church there in Oakland. Come on, give it up for him today, church family. Amen, you may be seated you stand one more time, but I got a few things I have to say. Amen. Ooh, I feel power in this place. I said, I feel power in this place. We always want to give honor to God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Does anybody know those three individuals in this place? Oh, you should have got louder than that. I'm going to give you one more try. Does anybody know those three individuals in this place? Ooh, I think I ought to say that. Does anybody know those three individuals in this place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then to um, the pastor, the shepherd of this house. Yeah, he, he got me all, he got me caught up in all this stuff. Um, yeah, we don't even call each other cousins. We call each other's brothers. Come on, put your hands together for your leader, your pastor. I know for a fact he's a good leader and he's a good pastor. And then I want to honor the first lady, my cousin. Uh, come on, put your hands together. I was... I was hoping to get a sermonic solo from her, but I, amen, maybe next time. But, man, doesn't she have a gift from God, amen, that can set the atmosphere that God is familiar with, and that is praise and worship. So we honor your gift as well as your position on today. I want to honor my wife who is here. We just celebrated uh, eight years, right, baby, eight years. I get mixed up because she always says nine, but that's how long we've were got we we've been together, and then we got married really fast, amen. And look, um, I got a whole bunch of family members here, but I want to honor my Auntie Mary Jo. Come on, y'all. I, I, I used to think about this, Gil. I said, she the only person I know that allowed a little kid to call her Mer Jo. I used to call her, but I used to be, what am I thinking? I, but that's what she, Merjo and Nana, we used to just call her Merjo, but we thank God for 85 years. Yeah, 85, 85. 
Um, but if you wearing black, see, I got my back. I got folks here that got my back. If you wearing black, just raise your hand. You just family, amen. <laughs> family came to see. Now look, if you got something bad to say, I got, I got, I got my back here. I got. I see First Lady Sanders, Velma Sanders. L listen, Wallace, I'm sorry. She started, she prophesied in my life. I don't even like to look at her sometimes because she gets to prophesying and all that. She said, I seen you preaching. I seen you changing light bulbs and dancing and all that. And here it is. So whenever Velma get around, just run out the room because she's going to get to prophesying. Amen. But we honor your gift as well. Amen. We want to turn with me to Psalms 40. Verses 1 through 3. We just got out of worship, and uh, I don't have the gift of singing. That didn't come. The Lord just passed over me and just gave it to Gil and Lisa and Derek and Cheryl and everybody. One thing I am going to say is I believe there's nobody in the world that can out-worship me. Where are my worshipers at in this house? Come on, I know I'm not in here. You don't have the gift of singing. But you know how to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with a praise. Is there anybody thankful and ready to bless his holy name? I want to know, is there anybody really ready to bless his holy name? I said, is there anybody? Oh, my God. I said, I feel power in here. I said, I feel power in here. Psalms 40, verses 1 through 3. If you don't mind, I'm going to read it in the New King James Version. It says, David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Is that what your Bible says? Uh, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Uh, another translation, it says, I didn't give up on the Lord. He, he finally listened to my prayer. Um, he also brought me, verse number two, he also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. And guess what he did? He set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will then trust in the Lord. You may be seated for the presence of the Lord. Uh, give me a few minutes as I speak on this subject. He may not come when you want him to. Uh, but he's an on time. Ooh, I, I said he may not come when you want him to. But he's an on time God. Um, have you ever noticed that when whatever level of education that you are on uh, or you have graduated from, uh, you have had a teacher or a professor prior to handing out an exam or a test, they give you instructions. And then they hand out the exams and tell you to turn the exam or the test over. And then they sit in their seat while you take the test and be very quiet. As a matter of fact, they don't say a mumbling word until the test is over. God has an unusual and on most account an unpopular way or method of being silent during the time that we think we need him most uh, and that is during a test uh, what do you do when um one minute you're sitting on top of the world gil and the next minute the world seems like it's sitting on top of you what do you do when uh you're one moment you're america's top model and then the next minute, you're America's most wanted. 
What do you do when uh, you're sitting pretty as a peacock, and then next thing you know, you're swept around like a feather duster? Uh, and then you call on God, and God is silent. I need to talk to some people this morning, Gil, that are in a season of their life where they feel like God is not hearing their prayers. Now, this sermon not be for some of you deep folk, but if you just keep it real, I need to talk to some people that when you call on God, you feel absolutely nothing. Um, you've touched and agreed with your prayer partner, and they got their prayers answered, but you're still waiting on yours. You laid hands on the sick, and they recovered, but your body is still racking in pain. I need to talk to some people this morning where you feel God is just too quiet. They don't even serve uh, ministry like you serve. They don't even give like you give. They don't even come to church like you come to church. But they always seem to be in blessed. Uh, you cried out to God day and night uh, on your lunch break, in your cubicle, uh, while you was driving your car. Uh, but the situation did not change. And so what happened is you begin to question God. You begin to say, Lord, when is it going to be my turn? Uh, I know the word. Uh, your word says to pray without ceasing. Your word says that men ought to always pray and Faint not. The word says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But I'm starting to get frustrated, God. I'm starting to get discouraged, God. And quite frankly, I really don't feel like even praying no more. I'm fed up. I'm disappointed. I'm weary. I'm tired. I'm tired of putting on this front. I'm tired of smiling when I'm really mad. I'm at wit's end. As a matter of fact, I'm really upset with you, God. Um, I'm at the point now, Lord, that I really am on the verge of just giving up. Come here, David. I need to holler at you for a minute. Because there are some people here that need a word from the Lord. You see, I know, David, you have gone through this situation. And, David, you have been here before. So, David, tell us, what did you do when you were in that turmoil and you were in that situation where you felt like God was just too quiet. David told me to tell you, number one, you have to realize that you have to be patient during the process. I said, be patient during the process. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. Here's the problem, Bethel. We don't like to be patient. Uh, not only we don't like to be patient, we don't like the process. Uh, can I talk about the process? See, life is a process. And we have to go through and experience various things. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Before we can become established in different areas and levels in our life. There's going to be some times in your life where you feel like you have to go through a process filled with heartache and pain before you experience the sunshine and the gain. The problem is there's not too many people who are fans of the process. Uh, the process means that we have to go through a series of actions before we see the end results. Who am I talking to in this house? Uh, my wife, my wife, my wife is trying to get us to eat healthy. Um, she recently introduced me to beets. Woo. I got a bad taste in my mouth right when you said that. You see, but the nutritionist... Uh, can attest, and those of you who are nutritionists can attest that there are benefits in eating beets. Um, it's an oxy, uh, oxy, uh, uh, oxy, 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 there you go. It, it, it's good 
for the organs. It's good for the heart. It fight cancer cells. It lowers your blood pressure. You see, I want to live healthy, but I don't want to go through the... Mm. And many of you have the end results or want the end results, but don't want to go through the process. And that's why I don't judge people when I see them get up and run around the church. Uh, yeah, because all I can understand is they're probably just going through the process. See, because you don't really know the pain behind their gang. You, you really don't know the story behind their glory. You, you really don't know the tears that they had to cry. Uh, you really don't know what they've been through. So when you see them run, it's because they deserve that shout. They deserve that praise. The way they lift their hands is because they know if it had not been for the Lord on their side. Uh, yeah, where, when you shout glory, hallelujah, I don't judge them now because they're going through the, David said, during the process, remember to be patient. Look at your neighbor and say, remember to be patient. Come on, that was the wrong neighbor. Look at your other neighbor and say, remember to be patient. You see, because we are in a microwave society. As a matter of fact, if you go to the grocery store, uh, everything now is instant. Instant grits and instant coffee and instant mashed potatoes and we don't even smother chicken no more and instant this and instant that and uh, we used to pop corn over the stove. Now you gotta pop it in the microwave. Why? Because you're not patient. You want it now and you want it uh, right now. Uh, we don't even make gravy no more. We, we, we get it in the bottle and we get it in the can. We don't even make homemade rolls no more, D. We, we, we don't make them like Nana used to make them where you have to roll out the dough and, and then take a cup and, and squeeze into that dough and turn it around and make sure the flour is on it and then put it in the oven and make sure the butter is on No, you want to go and get you some Hawaiian roll. I, I, I don't mean to make this about my wife, but uh, my wife uh, cooks out of crock pots. Listen, I knew this was going to be my wife when I saw two crock pots. Because that shows a lot of what? Because you put it in in the morning. And then you don't even touch it till you get home from work. But I need to know, are there any crock pot Christians in the house? Woo! That say, I'm waiting on God, not only in the morning, but Father, when you answer my prayer, I'll shout when I get home from work. Yeah, the problem is we don't like to be patient. And, and you see, we, we fail to realize is that Christians, we can't rush God. But can I tell you something? God has already made a way out of that situation you're going through. God has already established the results where we need to be and where he wants us to be. All things are about to work together for your good. I said all things are going to work together for your good. So while you're waiting, let me tell you what I do. Uh, I read my word. I, I keep witnessing to those who don't believe. I'm a worshiper at heart, and I don't just worship in the church, but I worship in my car on the way to work. Where are my worshipers at that understand where I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to stop shouting. I'm not going to stop dancing. I'm not going to stop giving. I'm not going to stop believing. I'm not going to stop trusting God. I'm not going to stop lifting my hands. I'm not going to stop praying because, Lord, I don't know when. I don't know where, I don't know how, I don't even know why, but I believe you're going to bless me. I like what David said. He said, while you are uh, patient, he said, you got God's attention. 
he said, what could David say? David said, and, and I inclined, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Uh, notice he didn't say recline. Uh, notice he said incline. Uh, recline is to look lean back. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean when you're watching TV. But, but, but to incline means to lean forward. God said, uh, because you were patient during the process, David, I now am about to lean forward and see exactly what you're dealing with. Uh, somebody needs to understand that the word incline used here means to bend or to bend down. Uh, we are describing God with a human characteristic, literally the Lord bending down and hearing God's David's cry. And I got some good news for somebody here today. Just like he bent over and he heard David's prayer, God came by here to let me know that he heard your prayer too. Yeah, I know, I know you don't believe it. I know you waiting. I know you wondering, but I came by here on an assignment to let you know that God heard your prayer. Yeah, that's good news because the enemy thought he had you. He, he, he thought you was about to give up. He thought you was about to throw in the towel because you know the devil is a liar. He's a thief and he's a deceiver. And I come against the spirit of rejection right now in the name of Jesus. Be patient during the process. De be patient during the process. Secondly, David teaches us that he may not come when you want him to, but, but just remember, God is going to pull you out of that problem and place you in a position to prosper. Woo. Look what the text said. The text said that God brought David out of two things. He brought him out of a horrible pit, and he brought him out of the miry clay. The Bible does not specifically tell us what exactly was going on in David's life that placed him in such a predicament. But whatever issue it was, whatever problem it was, whatever situation it was uh, that David was going through, he couldn't handle it all by himself. Uh, and as a matter of fact, he couldn't get out of it without the Lord's help. Because anytime God has to pull you out of something, you obviously can't do it on your own. Woo. I'm going to get to you in a minute. Biblically, biblically, uh, pits were different than jails. They were popular in Athens and Rome. Uh, they were uh, openings except a hole at the top which served both the door and the window. But here's the catch. It was dug so deep that it was easy to get in, Woo. but it was hard to get out of it. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody right now. Uh, the bottom of the pit was sometimes full of mud, and it made it very difficult to get any type of footing or tracking to attempt to even remove yourself out of that pit. The Bible says David was in a horrible pit and in the miry clay. In other words, David was in a situation that he is not only couldn't get out of it on his own, but he lost his footing and fell deeper in the situation. I believe, uh, Gil, there's some David Knights in the house, uh, in the church today and online who need God to pull them out of something. Uh, you're losing your footing and you're sinking fast. And whatever that situation you're in, you can't get out of it by yourself. Uh, you can't stop drinking by yourself. You can't stop smoking weed by yourself. You can't get out of that relationship by yourself. You can't get out of debt by yourself. You can't stop tipping and dipping by By yourself. Uh, as a matter of fact, things are just getting worse. But I have some good news for you today. Because I am a witness. 
And I believe I got about 50 more folk in here and that can agree with me and say, uh, I was in the worst condition of my life, but God lifted me out of it. Uh, I was in some worst relationships in my life, but God got me out of them. Uh, I was about to lose my mind. But God gave me the mind of Christ. I should have been on drugs. I should have been sick. I should have been homeless. I should have been in the hospital. I should have been outdoors. But God. I wish I had about 50 folk in here that had had a but God pray. Oh, that was very small. I said a but God. I said a but God praise. Aren't you glad that God looked beyond all your faults? And looked on your knees. I'm almost done, Gil. Um, uh, God told me to tell you, be patient during the process. God told me to tell you, he's about to pull you out of that problem. And put you in a position to prosper. But then finally, and most importantly, God said he's going to put you in a position to prosper so that you can praise him. Look what the Bible says. He says, he set David uh, upon a rock. Rocks are reliable. Rocks are silent. Rocks are unfailing. Rocks are unwavering. Rocks are consistent. In other words, I'm depending on something uh, David said that, that was about to make me fall, that was going to cause me to slip. I was depending on something that did not have a strong foundation. But how many know that Jesus is the rock of your salvation? Uh, how many know that on Christ, the solid rock I stand, and all other ground is sinking sand? How many know upon this rock, the Lord said that I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell are not going to prevail against it? How many know that Jesus is the rock of your salvation? And how many know that Jesus is a rock in a weary land. And then he said, because I'm going to set you on a rock, I'm going to establish your going. I'm going to make you unshakable. I'm going to make you unmovable. I'm going to make you unwavering. I'm going to put you in a fixed position so that when you've done all the stand, you're going to continue to stand. You're going to stand when they talk about you. You're going to stand when they lie on you. You're going to stand when all evil is manner is spoke against you. How many are about to get ready to stand with me today? David said, when you look back over your life and you think things over, your pain and your sorrows, your tears and your burdens, they didn't go to waste because now you know who woke you up this morning. Now you know who clothes you in your right mind. And now you know who gave you the activity of your limbs. Now you know who put a shelter over your head. Now you know who put clothes on your back. Now you know who you, where your peace came from. Now you know where your money came from. Now you know where your food came from. Now you know how you got your salvation. Is there anybody know the man Jesus? Oh, I said, does anybody know his name? His name is above every name. And at that name, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Woo, then he said, Gil, I promise you I'm out of here. He said that I'm going to put a new song in your mouth. I'm ready to sing how great is our God now. I'm ready to sing what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry. Every. I mean every. I mean every. I mean every thing to God in prayer. I got a new walk and a, a new talk and a, a new dance and I got some new mercies and I am ready to behold a new thing. Let's get out of here when I say, he says, praise the Lord. In other words, when God, uh, uh, he puts 
place you in a position to prosper. When God makes sure that you are patient during the process. When God lets you know that I got you out, I pulled you out of that situation. He said, please don't keep it to yourself. Please don't sit there and act like God ain't never done nothing for you. Please don't come in church no more acting like you might make it there the next time. He said, when you come into the house of God, you ought to give me some praise. And when you give me some praise, this is what I like. Your praise becomes a witness. Look what he says. He says, and many shall see your praise. And because they see your praise, they're about to trust in the Lord and they're about to get saved. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you are sitting next to somebody that understands that there's a praise in their heart. You're sitting next to somebody that got power in a praise. You're sitting next to somebody, as a matter of fact, that their praise will make it to heaven. And I'm not here by myself. I know I got about 50 folk in here that can say, Lord, when I praise, it's something about my praise. It's something about my shout. It's something about when I get my life together. It's something about when I give God some attention. I believe God is about to hear, is there any praises in the house? I need you to check your role and look at somebody and say, are you a praiser that can get a prayer through? I need you to check your role and ask somebody when praises go up. Do blessings come down? If they ain't, they then go move from them, get away from them. But if you got a praise, you ought to jump to your feet. Let your row know that when I praise, heaven hears my prayers. When I shout, heaven hears my shout. When I clap, heaven hears my clap. O's cry unto the Lord, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Is God good? He may not come when you want him to. But we serve an on-time God. I say we serve an on-time God. How good the Lord is. He may not come when you want him. But he'll always be on time. Be patient during the process because our God will be on time. Because God will put you in position to change your life. But not only change your life, but to change somebody else's life. You here, you may be here right now. The door of the Lord's house is open, standing all across the building, standing all across the building. He's an on-time God. Come on, sing it. May not come when you want him. Be there right on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Come on. Some of you have been in a pit. You've been struggling in this pit. But God is right there to help pull you out of this pit. But he'll. Yes. He's an old time God. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ, would you come on down the aisle? You've never given your life to Christ. You, you haven't depended and trusted on Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It is your opportunity to come down the aisle and get yourself out of the pit because God is right there. If you're here today, be there right on time. Come on. He's an on-time God. 
All right, maybe you're saved, but you drifted away from the church, and now you don't even have a church home, and, and you know that God has been telling you to get back in fellowship, to get under a pastor, and I can think of no better pastor than my pastor, the A.L. Gilmore, as the pastor here in Fairfield. If that's you, would you come down the aisle and give the deacons your hand? and give God your heart. Are you here? I know you've been struggling with it. You've been in that pit. You've been down in that pit. But many going to see and they going to praise God when you come walking down. They've seen your struggle. Are you here today? Yes, he is. Yeah. May not come when you want him. Be there right on time. He's an on time God. God bless you. You may be seated. He's on time. That's how grandma did that. He's on But he'll be there. I know he's an on time God. He's on time. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We prepare for our our baptism. We have four candidates. Praise the Lord. Those of you that are family members of these who are being baptized, you may come up to this area here if you would like. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Hallelujah. Take me to the water. To be, the old church would say, none but the right, uh, none but the right, oh yeah, none, good to see you James, God bless you. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait. I know that's old-fashioned. <laughs> God's going to trouble. God's going to trouble the water. Oh, wait in the water, you ought to wait. Wait in the water, God's going to trouble the water. Looked over Jordan, what did I see? God's going to trouble the water.
in obedience to his great command. We now baptize you, Jayla, on the profession of your faith in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In the water, wait in the water, God's going to trouble the water. Big gang symbols or something. <laughs> In obedience to his great command, we now baptize you, my sister, on the profession of your faith. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> ah! Ain't nothing wrong with shouting. <laughs> it's amen for Demarie. What a blessing it is to have Demarie come. Them, them, them dreads gonna be wet after this. Somebody said he need to go down twice. In obedience to his great command, we now baptize you, my brother, on the profession of your faith. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Uh oh. I'm so glad Jesus. I'm singing glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Sin had me bound. Jesus lifted me. In obedience to his great command, we now baptize you, Sean, on the profession of your faith in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Jesus lifted me when I was a sinner. Jesus lifted me when I was a, is that it? God bless you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, families, for coming up.
Thank you to our deacons and our deaconess. We are going to, Sister Kelly is going to come. We'll be ready for the benediction. Didn't Reverend Blanchard preach out of his heart today? He may not come when you want him, uh, but he's always right on time. What a word on today. We've been blessed by that word. Thank you, Minister Blanchard, for coming and sharing with us. Amen. I believe we are better because of that word. To all of our visitors, don't make this the last time. Come back and worship with us again. Sister Kelly is going to come. God has spoken. Let the church say, Amen. Church family, before she comes, everybody, November 10th. November 10th, church family, we will be the guests at the Berkeley Mount Zion Baptist Church at 2 o'clock, November 10th. Pastor and Sister Brian Hunter for their anniversary. Now, uh, Bethel, you know that Pastor Hunter has been to every anniversary we've ever had. Amen. All 15 years they've been here. And Berkeley Mount Zion comes in a big way, so we want to go on November the 10th at 2 o'clock. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. To all of our worshipers, we want to thank you for being with us virtually and in person today. This morning, Minister Rodney Blancher spoke from the 40th division of Psalm, the first through the third verse. He may not come when you want him, but he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Our prayer is that you've been blessed by our service today. Stay close to us as we stay close to you. And please visit our Facebook page for further worship opportunities. Please join us for Bible study on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Also on the first and third Wednesdays of the month from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., BCC hosts a food giveaway. Faith Over Fear meets on the first and third Thursdays of the month. Sunday school is available for children, youth, and there are separate classes for men and women. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m., and there is a call-in for those who cannot attend in person. The LLAR Pancake Breakfast will be held on Saturday, November 2nd, at Applebee's in Fairfield from 8 to 10 a.m. The tickets are $15.00. We are still looking for volunteers to help us as servers. Please see Sister Kathy Hall, Reverend Evans, or me for additional information and to purchase your tickets. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This year, we will display a memory board of those loved ones that fought the good fight to the end. The memory board will be displayed during each cancer awareness breakfast as well as in the back of the church throughout the year. Please submit the names of your loved ones, male or female, along with their year of passing by today. There is a sign-up sheet in the back. Uh, please make sure that you sign up today. Next Saturday, October 26th, from 10 to 12 noon, will be the Breast Cancer Awareness Breakfast. Please come out and support the lives of our sisters and brothers. Also, next Sunday, October 27th, we want everyone to wear something pink. Next Sunday, wear pink in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness. As Pastor mentioned, Sunday, November 10th, we will be traveling to the Berkeley Mount Zion at 2 o'clock for Pastor and, uh, Pastor and Sister Hunter's anniversary. The Faith Over Fear is having their Hallelujah Night on Thursday, October 31st. They're asking for donations of candy for their trunk or treat. There are barrels in the lobby to accept your candy donations. For your friends and family who do not have Facebook, please tell them this service will be posted to our YouTube official channel. Simply search for Bethel Community Church of Fairfield and subscribe to our channel. Blessings from the church house to your house. 
On behalf of our entire church, we welcome you to always worship at the Five Star Church, Bethel Community Church of Fairfield. Stay prayerful, stay in the word, and stay safe. God bless you. We're standing all over the building. Thank you for your patience today. To all of our friends and our family who are here today, it's so good to have you here with us. So good to have all of our friends and family sharing with us today. Don't make this the last time. Come back and share with us again. Come on, give it up for Minister Blanchard one more time. Powerful preaching. Thank God for the word. And now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, abide with each of us, henceforth now and forever. Shall we all say amen? Hug somebody you're going to talk about. <laughs>